is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour, where our motto is, kids are not our future, robots are. I just heard a couple of people uh, today at lunch, I went out thinking that probably not much going to happen today, and uh, thought, uh, hey, but I heard a lot of these uh, kids, uh, kids, I heard a lot of these uh, adults talking about their kids, and it was all about the kids are our future. But uh, most of the kids I know around here are dumb as a rock. I hope they're not our future. Robots, killer drones, I think that's our future. Just a thought. I always look on the rosy side of things. Anyway, it is an exciting day out here. We've at least got a little bit of action in the markets. Uh, certainly looks like this S&P 2000 is a war zone for the bulls and bears. We're off uh, 10 points on the S&P cash as we start the show. And 1.7 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. And I uh, find it very interesting to see uh, that, uh, you know, that we've got at least a little bit of volume on a Monday, not massive. If we would have had about 2 billion shares here, I would have thought something. But, of course, we've got a lot going on, and pretty much everything changed on Friday. Um, we were down, I think it was probably a little continuation here. As soon as the news came out, uh, almost to the minute, uh, that the Alibaba IPO was going to come out, uh, started seeing the market move up on Friday. Today, it's probably selling off uh, on the overhang of that. Uh, right now, as we speak, uh, Mr. Ma, who's the uh, king of Alibaba, uh, is uh, doing his road show and talking to about 800 people uh, in New York City. And uh, there was a reporter at an info babe from CNBC on, I think it was CNBC, uh, getting all giddy about how many people showed up to the deal. But uh, eh, it's stuff like that that I know can be huge amounts of propaganda. And that is, uh, eh, you send out 1,600 invitations, uh, 800 people say they're going to show up, so you get a room for 400. And it looks like uh, there's massive demand that you just never, oh, I never... You like the dramatic hand movements there? Never thought we'd see this kind of reaction. And uh, a, little, a lot more details coming out over the weekend about the Ali, uh, Alibaba IPO. And we'll get into it in just a minute. Of course, this day in 1930, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company sends out its first shipment of an amazing new waterproof transparent product. The company may have large possibilities. It's called Scotch Tape, uh, supposedly because of the stinginess in which the uh, company coated the surface with uh, such a small amount of adhesive. Uh, it had a rapid success in the depths of the Depression as penny-pinching Americans used it as a cheap tool for everything from resealing food cans to helping torn fingernails heal. And uh, on this day, MMM, one of the big uh, parts of the Dow got launched uh, at the very beginning of the Great Depression. And uh, eh, kind of interesting. Uh, very interesting also to see uh, the gentleman that did uh, the, the Civil War and all those other great uh, documentaries on. Uh, what else? Eh, documentaries on uh, oh, Prohibition and all those other uh, great ones on PBS coming out with a new one uh, on the Roosevelt's, uh, Teddy and uh, the two others. And uh, kind of interesting to see that uh, he said that the, they were majorly flawed individuals. wonder how much grief he's going to give uh, the uh, later Roosevelt's for ignoring uh, Hitler's rise to power. Uh, kind of like having a, if I would put a knock on 
on the uh, later Roosevelt's. It was uh, the knock would certainly be that um, they knew a pedophile was down on the end of the street that wanted to molest his kids, and he just kept looking the other way and acting the other way. And, you know, it's I guess you can ignore problems, but uh, they always become a bigger ones. kind of like uh, not uh, replacing your roof when it needs, and suddenly you've got leaks in there, and now you're replacing your drywall. Uh, but uh, I digress. And, you know, yeah, Mr. Burns. Oh, yeah, jazz, uh, baseball. Oh, they were oh, such great, uh, great uh, things. But uh, I think he was out earlier today. But I guess that starts next Sunday night, and it's going to run several nights. Didn't get a chance to listen to him closely. But uh, anything he does, I want to see. Uh, he was just probably gushing about the Roosevelt's just a little bit too much. Really like Teddy. Uh he was uh, kind of a nut, and uh, yeah, probably enjoy that more than uh, what ends up being the sh- sugar-coated uh, Roosevelt's of the 30s, and uh, pretty much up until his death. Of course, uh, what did we find out last night? And that is uh, the setting sun. Japan's the world's thirst, uh, thirst, third largest economy contracted at an annualized rate of 7.1%. Uh, in April and June through June quarter. So uh, continuing to see weakness uh, in the Pacific Rim. The initial estimate uh, released earlier this month said the economy contracted 6.8%. And, of course, uh, uh, not good. Uh, Expansion is good. Contraction, bad. It didn't seem to bother uh, the European market as much. They were all down 2 to uh, 5 tenths of a percent. Uh, so not up, but uh, not a huge uh, ballyhoo that I think we've seen here, at least on the United States of the mar- uh, side of the market. Uh, of course, uh, we were talking about Alibaba, and I think there's several things to take away from it. Uh, this is a teachable moment. We always get new listeners to TFNN, and I appreciate each and every one of our humble listeners. Uh, and uh, part of... Uh, this is talking about how these IPOs roll out and the effects, especially these large ones, have on the market. Uh, we did learn a little bit more. Some of the uh, people from uh, TD Ameritrade were speaking this weekend. And uh, there's one guy named Steve Quirk um, was talking about uh, you know, they were trying to get this thing out the door in May because they thought the window was going to go away. Uh, for the Alibaba IPO for trying to push out 20... Actually, at one point, they were going to try to push out $40 billion all at once. Uh, that has shrunk. But uh, even back then, the problem was they couldn't get any retail buyers. It still looks like this is going to be somewhere from about an 86 to 88% um, uh, basically a uh, street bought IPO. And uh, there are a few people out there that know what this is, but uh, um, I'm not looking for huge movement in the uh, first day of this trading. It will start trading a week from Friday uh, if everything works out okay. Uh, But there's a lot that you need to know. One is that there really isn't a great deal of retail interest in it, according to the uh, gentleman from TD Ameritrade. Um, I've heard several other things uh, pretty much over the weekend, the news dribbling out. Uh, that many people on uh, Wall Street said that the huge delay was because they thought that they would have the clamor uh, to buy this that uh, maybe Facebook or Twitter or some of these other ones have had. But uh, I think a lot of people that bought those early now know that these things can pull back quite a long time uh, before you get a good deal. And uh, the street names out here uh, look like they're going to uh, uh, belly up to the bar, as it were, and really start buying these. Um, and yeah, I wanted to go to this one. I got it out of order, apparently. Um, the Alibaba Sliver IPO is what I'm calling it. And if you haven't listened, uh, I talked about this maybe a year ago, uh, but I want to take over again. And that is that, uh, of course, only a small portion of the shares of Alibaba will start trading at the beginning uh, in the open float. And not even in the lock, including all the lockup, uh, there's only going to be 21.1 billion shares uh, out next Friday. That will leave 167.7 billion shares sitting on a shelf. 
Uh, they're all printed up, ready to go to raise money or to give to uh, the executives or do other things with. Uh, but uh, over the years that Alibaba will be out, remember uh, that uh, you're talking about maybe less than fifth of the shares are going to be uh, even uh, available to trade a week from Friday. And uh, instead of every time these guys uh, need to expand or need more money, uh, they're going to throw a few more shares on the fire. And that's going to limit the upside to this stock for years to come. It's kind of like uh, having a Microsoft's uh, Steve Gate or Bill Gates constantly selling every single day. Uh, in the uh, oh, from about 2000 to 20, no, actually he's still doing it. I think he's out of shares in about six months and will no longer be a shareholder of Microsoft. But it took him 10 years to sell his. And we saw Microsoft pretty much for the most part stuck in a trading range until uh, the latest CEO came in and kind of the old guards over. Of course, now we've got Steve Ballmer who will be an active seller for years to come. But um, that's the overhang you have. It's called a sliver deal based on uh, what was popular at the time. Uh, going into the uh, dot-com bust, so many of these sliver deals came out. Uh, and uh, the stocks would race to astronomical values based on the fact that maybe one-fifth, uh, one one-tenth, one-twentieth of the amount of shares uh, that were available were actually there. And they caused a short squeeze right off the bat. Uh, people were sorting these things that basically had no business underneath them anyway and still got squoze. Uh, but uh, just remember that uh, if you buy this thing, the overhang that's going to be available for years to come. Now, this is uh, at a price of $65 a share. I did the numbers on uh, this chart. Uh, but uh, it could go as high as 70 bucks, which would make this even higher. And uh, just remember that uh, they were trying to push out $40 billion uh, just in May and getting, couldn't get it done. Uh, now uh, they're back and uh, uh, just $21 billion at probably $65 a share. So that is uh, yeah. interesting. Nonetheless, um, of course, uh, tomorrow uh, we've got Apple rolling out and uh, they're going to have their new products. We're going to talk about the firehouse effect. Another thing I haven't talked about in a little while. Um, eh, oh, I guess we're getting ready for a break here. So I don't have enough time to complete this. But the firehouse effect, uh, I'll get started on it, it, is a test that psychologists use. Basically what they did was take people from one firehouse uh, that had very strong political opinions and move them to another firehouse that had very strong political opinions and uh, surveyed them over the next five years to see how those opinions started to change. And uh, needless to say, a very interesting thing happens uh, when you uh, have a social pressure. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technamental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And uh, very interesting, uh, we were talking about this. I also wanted to make notice uh, that if you emailed me last week, I probably didn't get your email. So I'm, we've got it fixed over the weekend. I did, of course, if you don't get an email, it's like the knock on the door that didn't come. I just assume that you didn't knock. I just assume that people weren't <laughs> sending me emails last week. And unfortunately, about three-fourths or seven-eighths of them went into the big bucket. So if you have been emailing me, you might want to do it again about anything. Uh, anyway, um, uh, kind of interesting. Got some people uh, sending some emails today. We'll look at those stocks. We were talking about the uh, firehouse effect. It was a psychological study in the throughout the I think the seventies and the eighties. Basically, they took a lot of uh, firemen um, from one part of town that had strong political beliefs, uh, and uh, one on the opposite side of the town which had strong political beliefs, and they moved uh, the uh, firemen from one to the other and then slowly surveyed him every year uh, after a number of years and found out that uh, the people you hang around with make a huge difference in uh, at least the politics that you have and uh, there's a lot of get along uh, to go along uh, in it but uh, people actually did slowly uh, tend to change their um, views on politics and the they basically did a little bit more studies on that, and 
if you go to a small town, uh, you're much more likely to uh, stick with whatever your beliefs were before you went. Uh, you're much more likely to have uh, the ability to actually have an independent thought. Uh, normally, when I hear somebody, some big city slicker from uh, any of the big five cities in the United States start uh, spouting stuff off, uh, I, I heavily discount it. Uh, normally, especially if it's from Washington, D.C., um, I just f figure that they're just uh, regurgitating something else someone else uh, said that they thought that sounded smart. Uh, probably not a lot of thinking going on for the most part in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, when it comes to stock market, uh, almost everybody that's a, a big deal lives and works around New York City. They send their their kids to the same schools. They go to the same restaurants. Uh, they all vacation in the Hamptons. Uh, not going to be a lot of independent thought out there. Uh, a true market is made up of a lot of different people from a d lot of different places. And normally, a, a market will make a fairly good decision over time. Uh, people all living in the same place, doing the same thing, acting the same way, probably not so much. And we've seen the, the press... Uh, become uh, pretty much sycophants. Um, I did see a study out about two weeks ago that said uh, about 90% of the media all had Apple iPhones, and that pretty much told me everything I needed to know about the uh, almost glowing and uh, almost sickening way uh, that I was seeing uh, the new product launch come out, almost like God had come down and delivered the tablets with the uh, Ten Commandments on it. Uh, very few people, especially the people that live in Silicon Valley. I wa also watch a couple of uh, podcasts or listen to podcasts about them discussing stuff. And it's almost like, you know, Apple's doing it and therefore no one else could ever come up with anything else. Um, real history is a uh, part with uh, people that uh, have uh, and big companies that have uh, been once uh, believed to be an uh, uh, un, uh approachable and uh yeah, people get in and they do something so tuesday last tuesday when we saw samsung come out an instant four dollar drop in uh, apple's price uh, still not really recovered from it uh, let's see what we have for apple's price now okay off 80 cents at uh, 98 dollars 16 cents uh, i was stupefied not to hear all these people uh, saying that maybe it had just been overhyped. Maybe uh, that the high-end part of this market is fairly uh, defined. That uh, what uh, uh, Wall Street, for the most part, when they're telling the big lie, uh, what they like to do is come up with a thing called the total addressable market. We talked about that before. Um, when you hear that, you should start running. Because that basically says, well... Every human breathes, so the total addressable stock market or market for cigarettes is 7.5 billion people or whatever we have now, 7 billion. Uh, sorry, not going to be 7, people, uh, 7 billion people smoking or you're not going to talk them into it uh, with all those kind of stupid ideas. But uh, we're going to see it tomorrow. I do expect Apple to go up a bit uh, into the hype and they're going to have a few things we don't know about. Anyway, we'll talk more about this when we come back, but uh, don't believe the hype is kind of what I'm saying out here, especially from a sick media. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we get back here, we'll take a quick look at the market. And we're off nine points on the S&P cash, 1.82 billion shares. So volume picking up a little bit, but still rather light. We're going to go right to our caller, who is Scott from Safety Harbor. A very beautiful place down here in Florida. How are you doing today, Scott? That's quaint. It's, uh, it's, uh, a little, it's kind of like a diamond in the rough. It's not real polished, so it's... Uh it's nice. I'm, I'm looking at Apple, and I even though you know there's some hype and so forth involved. I mean, at 98, what is it right now? 98, 70 or something. Mm -hmm. I, I just think just the pure excitement of it. You know. Oh, they're going to bounce it. Dollar, at least. I think dollar. they're going to bounce it tomorrow. I'm yeah. just wondering: is, is there really any upside that would get me involved in this thing? And the Why answer is get involved for a day or two. Eh, you could. You're probably going to get, I would probably bet on an interday bounce, but here are the two things that are risk factors for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, one is that they come out with the, and show the iWatch, but it does not have a um, 3G or 4G chip in it, and you have to have the iPhone in your pocket anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people would be very disappointed uh, about the long-term prospects of selling an iWatch if that happens. Uh, the other things could be that some of the things that, that have been rumored were not true. Now, on the upside, there's maybe some of the deals that they've made that we haven't learned about. We pretty much learned almost everything about the new iPhones already from leads. 
What we don't know about since the iWatch isn't in production yet is what it's going to be and how it's going to be set up. Is it really going to be any better? Do you uh, think it's something like Facebook, which, which believe it or not, and I, I hate to admit it, but I, I lost a, a, a whole bunch of money on the Facebook IPO. I got scared because they had the talking heads on in the negative form when it, when it took a dive there. And got out of it. And uh, but what I should have really been thinking, I think, is more like I, I think uh, the way I look at Apple. The, these things are kind of ubiquitous, and whatever it does today, it's inevitable that it's going to increase in value. It's not inevitable. What what happens when every person has a smartphone? But so many people are converting to this iPhone. To me, the best the, the, phone in the, the truth world... Is that, that, I'm sorry, I can't believe that. 85% of the people are using Android. I, I, well, that's what I was going to say. I have Android, and here's mm-hmm. the market that's completely untapped. I have a lot of... Uh, I'm 46. I have a lot of um, relatives that are older, which represents you know millions and millions of people. Right. And so the other day... I, I stopped by everybody's house on the weekend. It's just this is my deal, my charity service, you know, five or six of them. And they all have these funky phones. And I asked every one of them, because it just hit me the other day, what if they made a phone that just had a, one button on it to talk? And, and it had a big, big button to talk. And then it had the buttons to call, just a stick phone, not even a flip phone. Because believe mm-hmm. it or not, when you get old, even flipping that phone open, they, they drop them on the floor all the time. Oh, I, I know Every it. I see those ads for the crickets said, all would, the time. That would be fantastic. Just just a phone, what they call a stick phone, with a button on it and, and some push buttons to call. No text, no nothing. Now, take that same idea, put it on a watch where you can just, it rings, boom, you tap it, and it's got a beautiful speaker phone. You know, I tried to find, because I use speaker a lot, I'm, I, I'm a believer and then it's bad for you, you know, holding it to your ear. Do you know that that it, they don't even want to talk about it at these stores? The speakers, you know, it's it's not it's not on anybody's radar. But everybody wants a good speakerphone. Yeah. So I think they're really missing the boat with a huge market that just flat out want to talk. The I think there's a well, it's part of the media too, which is they're all incredibly stuck on. Whatever the kids are using now, right? Whatever's Texas, new, Texas, whatever's hot. You know, we had 25 years ago on our pagers. Why were we moving backwards? And <laughs> the, uh, but I guess my bigger point out here is Apple is on uh, what they're doing. It's not going to be like their sales are going to cut in half. So you can't, a lot of people want to short it. And I think you can't bet that. But the question is, have they gotten to the large of uh, the law of large numbers? And the yeah, people are they who are the saturation level? I, I think you're right somewhat about that. But I think that people are dropping those phones as well and breaking them and and, and that type of thing is you know there is there is the, up, there. the there is the upgrade cycle, but the, at the price point that Apple's now at, it has a huge amount of downside if something like the iWatch doesn't come on and add probably 20 to 25 percent revenues in the coming years. Okay, how about this billing thing that that they're doing with the the, NFC? Yeah. You know, it's nice to be. It's a great business to be in uh, in Visa and MasterCard. Uh, The question I would say is, what is the deal? And that's the problem is that we never know. I can't find out about what what, what exactly, how they... You know. split how they split the yeah, money right exactly. and, and that that is something that of course uh, many people you know, Apple keeps on trying to get into t- the television market uh-huh. and they can't get anybody to talk to them because of what they've done to the music industry and, I think that that would bring Apple down getting the what, TV market eh, I don't think there's Too many that people much, in it already yeah I don't think there's that much money in it in it um, and the big problem is that uh, a lot of like the Google iTunes TV would have same thing would happen. And iTunes business is kind of going away from Apple. In fact, right. uh, the lowest amount of money in the last uh, three months was spent uh, in 25 years uh, in music. 
and downloadable music. Streaming's taking over, and artists are making even less than they were making you know, just six months ago. They're so good at getting this stuff, and, and I have never been able to answer this question. All these rap stars that, mm-hmm. that, that drive these, you know, they got 50 Rolls Royces and all. How in the world, because I, I lived in New York for a while, especially in the ghetto areas, nobody buys any music. It's all no, it's all. It's stuff. All, it, it, 98% of all the How money made. How do these made, guys make all that money then? Uh, personal performances. I guess so. You're right, yeah. Yeah, the Eagles made uh, almost, uh, I think, almost $750 million in three tours, although wow. they haven't had a album that sold more than uh, 100,000 copies in 25 I'm years. I'm not a live music guy, so I guess you're right. I mean, there's there's people that do go to those things still, but... It's it's just amazing, like you said. I think it's going to get to the point of no return with these movies and stuff. And the, uh, the, I, yeah, I think that the music. you know competition's going to come in, and that's going to be Netflix's problem. They're going to have to pay more for content and be able to go up against some other people that are getting into that business. So I think that that's a the problem is it's so easy to get into. You buy a, uh, a rent, even just a bunch of servers from Amazon or IBM right. or Microsoft. And you have a streaming music or mu- streaming video service, right? And it's there's not a lot of barriers as long as you can get somebody to sell you content. So, and that being said about equipment, I mean, this is what make what makes a bootleg so good. These guys go in theaters with a hand camera and the high quality, the quality is so much, and then they get it back to the editor. I've heard that they can come out with a movie literally the next day oh, on the street. Really, They'll be selling they, it the next day. Whatever that new Stallone movie was about the uh, Invincible, whatever, the third version of that movie, leaked three weeks before the movie ever came out. So, I mean, there there are a lot of these movies that that, that happens. So, but back guess, to Apple, you, you really see like a, a small pop tomorrow and then it backing down maybe into the 80s? I think that there is the, if there is the thought that this iWatch is not the product that takes it up. I think without all the hype of the new products coming out, I think this was a $550 stock. I, at 700 bucks. Mm-hmm. I think that includes a great deal of this iWatch business that, uh, I mean, there's been some, fan, uh, Johnny Ives, the guy that designs the cases and all the, well, it's part of the way that the operation look and feel. He's not a technical guy designing mm-hmm. chips. But he's run around now and kind of upset that he didn't get his own jet. And he's, you know, he's he's starting to buy into the hype and a lot of the uh, news reporting on him and thinking that he's a, a big rock star now. Uh, but when when we look at him and him, he's saying that we're going to put all the Swiss watchmakers out of business. It's pretty. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> it, it, you know, that's why I think we're starting to see that Apple's a little weak out here. I think that they're making a lot of claims. And the thought is normally you didn't have to make these claims going into an announcement and that that it may be good. But, again, the, the, the whole thing about NSC and the payments is uh, how does that money get split? Yeah, because that's don't, what excites me more, more than the watch, really. It, it, that, that's, that's where I think the money could that, come from. That, yeah, it, that would probably replace the iTunes uh, music business. Mm-hmm. So that would keep them, to me, that NFC stuff, just looking at the back of an envelope. I, it looks to me like they could uh, get a lot of that cash that they used to have um, coming in from iTunes that's slowly going away. Uh, for music downloads and going to the streaming services like Spotify and Pandora, that kind of stuff. Um, so that would replace that. I, it's hard for me. Credit cards are probably getting about 2.5%. Um, I'm just wondering if these guys aren't getting a quarter of a percent of or an eighth of a percent for using this. Right. So I think it, I think it could be a big business. Uh, but, again, it's probably incremental. And it's not uh, what the market's looking for, which is some kind of ability to start selling Beats Heads phones and iWatches and turning Apple, I said in the Tech Insider a couple of months ago, basically to, uh, turning it into the Electrolux vacuum cleaner company. What is it? Kirby. All right. With all the attachments because they, they had reached the saturation level of right. what Apple 
ha- has had. So right. I'm going to be very interested. I don't know other than the iPhone. Just a uh, two-second new- take on Alibaba. What do you think? I wouldn't, I wouldn't invest in it. Uh, it's just me. There's too I mean, there are so It's not too many. There are so many unknowns about yeah, what yeah. happens. And Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I don't like to see stock. Uh, when they come out with these sliver deals, and this exactly. is the bigger, yeah. biggest sliver right. deal ever, uh, yeah. that stock's going to be overhanging what they do forever. Now, maybe it gets to be a double, but normally you buy these IPOs because you think that maybe I could get 10 or 20 times mm. over the years in my money, right? I and, steer it every day I owned Alibaba. It may, may sound silly, but I, I've it's traded not, Baidu many I mean, times, and I never like to have it more than a day. Yeah, it's um, the problem problem i see is that the whole accounting thing still hasn't ever been cleaned up uh, exactly. in fact i called the sec again on friday and again this morning and they won't no one will respond to me on you know basically how all these things got resolved so you know because i'm gonna read go ahead because i didn't i don't Never know thought. it's it should be in the prospectus i've gotten a copy of it but you know, it's a couple hundred pages, so I'm going to have to go through and see what they said. But there's uh, conflicts of interest. And, in fact, I was talking about them having the road show today. Mm-hmm. We may see tonight in the news some of these questions being asked at this road show. Like, you own part of the company that owns Alibaba as a investor, and then, of course, your brother owns uh, that company. And, right. you know, the, the, the corporate right. structure of this company is so bizarre how do we know, and what do we know that we're buying? And, of course, That's it's That's what illegal. scared me away from it, the corporate structure. Is yeah, it and then, really of course, the, it's, it's illegal to own uh, a part of a company uh, in China unless you do uh, several things. So uh, they basically got the shell around the company so that you can own shares in it, but you really don't own the company. It sounds to me like a giant Ponzi scheme. One day, uh, the Chicoms are just going to flip a switch, and you're going to own nothing. And exactly. that's what that would scare me more than anything. Exactly. Um, I don't think that they're as bad as Russia, but I don't think it. They would lose any sleep if one day no, we got not. in a shooting war over there, uh, over the Sprotly I- Islands, and they just said, "Hey, uh, all that money's gone." I hear you. Well, thank you very much for your opinion, David. Keep up you the bet. good work. Okay, we had a couple of emails out here. Uh, to, 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 uh, what else do we have? Okay. Uh, we wanted to get to them. I'm going to run short of time out here. In fact, we're down to a minute. Um, first one is on T, Ken, in Wyoming. Uh, AT&T, of course, probably going to move a little bit. They have the most customers with iPhones out there that could upgrade. And uh, if news is good tomorrow, this thing's probably going to be in a trading range between now and Christmas, between 34 and 37 and a half bucks. Um, I just don't see it going anywhere fast. Um, and uh, certainly don't like the energy off this last stop. But uh, to me, this thing's in a lower trading range and uh, probably be bouncing around this 34 and a half level, especially if the market starts selling off uh, after expiration, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I think we're going to see kind of sideways action around 2000 on the S&P until this uh, market uh, starts rolling out here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Goldman Sachs when we come back, WPRT. Uh, also, and uh, we'll try to hit those before the end of the show. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we come back, I wanted to uh, get this slide out before. And, of course, there's always the announcement, and then they start shipping a couple weeks later, generally. Uh, it looks like uh, just about every airliner uh, out of uh, Asia uh, that is available for freight is being used to ship phones over here at the moment. Uh, so they are on their way. So I uh, figure maybe this weekend, maybe two weekends from now, uh, we'll see these iPhones uh, for sale. Uh, and, of course, the big thing is the day of the event, how does the market react, and then the event to the launch. Uh, kind of all over the place out here, mostly it had to do with uh, the cycle, and that is every two years, of course, AT&T, who originally had the phone for so many years, uh, had two-year contracts. At the end of two-year contracts, uh, most people moved to the next newer phone at uh, 100 bucks or whatever it was. Now, um, this is going to be a fairly decent upgrade cycle for AT&T, who still basically kept most of those customers uh, and uh, still has the bulk. I think somewhere around 75% of iPhones are on AT&T here in the United States, and we're probably going to get the bulk of the sales in the United States for the iPhone uh, early on. And then they'll, I think they're going to be a few weeks later in Europe and then maybe a month later in uh, some parts of Asia and Australia. So they're going to be rolling out through the next 
uh, 30, 45 days around the, around the rest of the world. Uh, but uh, just take a look at that uh, and just kind of know that there isn't a lot of rhyme or reason. But uh, my guess is they're probably going to come out with a few things tomorrow, and that's going to uh, pop the market. Uh, I had a few questions on Goldman Sachs. Um, basically, it has given a fairly decent sell signal at 181. Uh, I'm looking at options, though, and they tell me that th they are doing everything they can to make sure that this market goes out uh, at 2,000 a week from today on the S&P cash. Uh, we're also seeing some fairly uh, decent upgrades in the financial sector. I suspect they're going to keep this market, do whatever it takes to keep it up for the next two weeks for this IPO. So I'm not thinking for the best known stocks out here, uh, especially stocks with a lot of options that... Uh, uh, this is going to be a great time to be uh, uh, be shorting anything over the next uh, 10 trading days into expiration. But, uh, you know, maybe a black swan event happens, but I have a feeling we're going to be going sideways for a while. We talked about Apple. One of the other questions out here is Westport Innovations. Uh, does start to look like a fairly interesting chart out here. I would have liked the energy to really pull back a little bit more than it did, uh, but uh, not a bad-looking chart out here. Uh, if you believe the future is natural gas. The problem with this company is that it needs a bunch of natural gas stations all along every interstate in the country. And, um, you know, basically uh, you can say William uh, Buffett has uh, uh, and Obama are anti-natural gas uh, and uh, not going to let the uh, pipelines in. And, uh, of course, Buffett owns all the train companies and uh, don't really want a lot of natural gas out there when we can get paid to haul, uh, you know, basically crude out of uh, the the uh, northwest. And uh, I just, it's hard for me to see it until we see probably a different administration uh, that is pro-natural gas. Maybe we get one, maybe we don't. But until then, it's hard to say that you don't think coal is going to zero. Uh, and that uh, natural gas is going to continue to have issues uh, in what Westport does, which is basically turn, uh, turning cars into natural gas burners from uh, gasoline. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow, same bat channel, same bat time. And uh, remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. You've heard Basil Chapman on the air as the host of the Tiger Technician's Hour, and now's your chance to spend a full day learning his trading methodology, the Chapman Wave. Basil has taught thousands of students his trading methods over the years, and on Friday, September 12th, he'll be hosting a one-day online Master Trader Series class. Included is a month of his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $128 value. Basil will cover a variety of topics and techniques that he uses when looking at key charting patterns that repeat consistently in the market and that you can add to your trading methodology. You have access to the full eight-hour archive for a period of 30 days, as well as availability to ask questions of Basil in the month following the course as you practice what he teaches in this full-day Master Trader class. For all the details, visit TFNN.com and sign up for Basil Chapman's Master Trader class on Friday, September 12th. Reserve your seat today.